Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I am Dwayne Johnson. I am the senior pastor of Speak to My Heart Ministries, and thank you for joining us. Facebook, welcome. YouTube, welcome. Uh, our church website, speaktomyheart.org, welcome. Ustream, welcome. If you're watching this on the replay, Thank you for joining us and for my beautiful wife, Cynthia, my family, and for all of the leadership of Speak to My Heart Ministries, my daughter, my son. We send love to you. We thank you for joining us for Wednesday Night Bible Study. And you know how we do when we start off Bible study. We drop in the chat box a prophetic statement that declares, all is well. Whatever my lot thou has taught me to say, it is well. So I need you to put that in the chat box right now. I don't care how your day's going. I don't care how your life is going. I don't care about your money. I don't care about just your body situation. I need you to declare all is well, or I am well. Put it in the chat box. A hundred people right now, I want you to declare. I want the enemy to hear it. I want your family, your friends to know that all is well. Listen, guys, I'm jumping in here. I'm not teaching Bible study tonight. Oh, Sister Deborah Brown is bringing forth the word, and we're excited about this faithful awesome, anointed, gifted, and talented woman of God who's getting ready to bring forth an awesome word. We're coming to you with a word, but guess what? Before that, the only reason I'm here tonight is because we have Family and Friends Day this Sunday, this Sunday, April 21st, 2024 at 10 a.m., 3903 West Belvedere Avenue. It's going down at the church, at our family. We want you to invite your family, your friends, your loved ones, your coworkers, your neighbors. I need every member of Speak to My Heart Ministries to bring five people. Say it, five, five, five. You have the grace to bring five people to church. I need you to text them. I need you to call them. I need you to go pick them up, bring them to church. If they don't have a ride, I need you to go get them. We're going to have an awesome time. The praise and worship team, the music ministry, the choir. Oh, God, it's going to be awesome. The men, the women, the children, we have something special for you. And for the top three people who bring the most people to Family and Friends Day, we have a special, special gift for you on Sunday. It's going to blow your mind. I need you to be here. Something amazing is happening, and we're on the verge of something great. There's a breakthrough coming, and I need you to be there. Church has been off the charts lately. Bishop uh, James Nelson Sr. preached the word. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I'm still blessed by that word on Sunday. And I don't want you to miss what God is getting ready to do next for our family and friends day. This Sunday, uh, it's going to be this Sunday, not February, but April 21st. Uh, I'm so excited at 10 a.m. Sunday, April 21st, 10 a.m. Be there or be square. We have a flyer. I want you to share it on social media. I want you to post it in the lunchroom at your job. I want you to text some family members and friends and coworkers and invite them to come and be a part of our Family and Friends Day celebration. Oh, we've got something in store for you and every family that comes is going to get a family picture by our own sister Renee Somerville. You're going to get a beautiful family portrait just for coming to Family and Friends Day. You're gonna get a word from the Most High God. You're gonna be inspired, you're gonna be encouraged, and you're gonna meet incredible people because our family at Speak to My Heart Ministries is the best church on the planet. I need you to be there. Come, worship with us in spirit and in truth. This Sunday, April 21st at 10 a.m., get there early. It's gonna be off the charts. I love you. And it's time for us to go to the word of God tonight by the servant of the most high God, Sister Deborah Brown, is going to bless us with the word from on high. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. Be blessed by our own Sister Deborah Brown, 
Speak to My Heart Ministries. I'll see you Sunday for Family and Friends Day at Speak to My Heart Ministries. Good evening, Speak to My Heart Ministries and friends and those that are watching in out there this evening. We welcome you to Speak to My Heart Ministries where our pastors are Bishop Dwayne Johnson and First Lady Cynthia Johnson. We thank you for joining in on this evening, and we pray that you are blessed by the word on today. We are actually located at 3903 West Belvedere Avenue in the city of Baltimore, Maryland. So if you would like to join us, we do have our service that's going to be coming up on this Sunday at 10 a.m. We are welcoming you here, and we would love to see you. So at this time, we just ask that wherever you're at, if you will bow your heads as we pray in Jesus' name. Father God, in your name, we do thank you, Lord God, for this day that you allow us to see, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, tender mercies, for all that you've done, doing, and about to do. God, we ask that you would move right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray right now, Lord God, that you would touch lives on this evening, oh God. Lord God, I ask that you would even touch my mind and my heart, oh God, as I bring forth your word. I pray that I be sensitive to your move, oh God, to your voice, oh God, to feed your people in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that self have no part in this, that you have your way, oh God. Bless those that are sick, oh God, those that are troubled in their minds, oh God. And Lord God, we just thank you because you are so good all the time and there is none like you. We bless your name. We give you praise, oh God. We honor you and we adore you in Jesus' name. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to ask if you would turn your Bibles to the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 43. And I'm going to be going to verse 18 and 19. And if you have it, read along with me while you're out there. All right. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I just was reading this scripture for a while, and it, it blessed my heart. I was thinking about some things that uh, a cousin of mine, of, of, of mine, we were on the phone. We were talking about some things that uh, we had done when we were younger kids as we would visit our grandmother's house when we were younger and we were talking about going to the uh, the neighborhood, there was a, a family, they uh, used to have all the goodies there, like the snowballs and the freezy cups. I think I'm saying that one right. It was the frozen cups or freezy cups or whatever way you say it. They had snacks. They had all the goodies. And when we would be at Grandma's house, she would give us the change to go there and to um, be able to get out snacks for the day and and it just summertime, it was just good when we was younger. We would be there and enjoying each other time. So we were reminiscing on that. And we were thinking about when we were young kids, how it was just fun times. And it was just something for us to, to, to just enjoy each other company, being there with family during the summer months and going to like the, the, the pools. They were open and we would just get in the water and have a great time. And then we said, wow, those were the days. So now we're thinking about as we are adults, we're just like, those are days we can't bring back. But those are uh, things that we were just looking back over. We can't be stuck in those days because those are days when we were like little kids. And now that we are adults, there are some new things that we have to do. We can't just be as adults going back to the same places that we were going and when we were younger so we had to come to a place where we had to graduate gradually and just do some different things so one of the things I was looking at um, when I was reading the scripture um, one of the things I had put in and if you want to write this down you can I said to stop looking behind sometimes it's okay to look back 
um, and just reminisce on some things. But we sometimes some things, depending on what it is, we don't want to get stuck there because sometimes some of those things that may have occurred over our period of lives, there could have been some things that wasn't so great. And then when we get at the place where we come out of those things, that means we're, we've been moving forward. It's like when we look back, we start getting in our feelings about some stuff. Uh, we start getting, uh, like, we, we, we start maybe having uh, uh, just, just reflecting on the things that may have happened that may not have been so good. But we also come to a place where we can thank the Lord for bringing us from out of those places that we have been in. And again, not to say that all the places that we come from was bad but number one I just had to stop looking behind and then number two I had uh don't expect past victories to sustain us and then you can write that down if you want to and then on number three I had don't allow past failures to paralyze us like I was just saying sometimes we can allow the things that may have happened before to just numb us and we we, we just be stuck in a place where as though it's like, okay, I'm keep looking at things that happened in the 70s, and that's where I'm at, and that's where our mind will go sometimes. And it's not good to be in those places. So we have to be real careful when those things occur, when we're thinking about the stuff that happened from before, because it causes sometimes us to reflect on the bad things and it can do some damage to our spirits it can mess our mental health up and it can cause all kind of issues and so I just want to tell you again if you're out there you can put in the the uh you can write down here or you can look at your family member or who's there and say don't look back um, although there is a time and place to recollect events to glean its wisdom we don't stay there. Just remember not to stay there. The past is not a bad place to learn from, but it's a terrible place sometimes to live in. So we want to be careful when we think about those things that happened in the past. Some of us hang on to the baggage, to some unresolved issues, failures, some negativities, for far too long, and we have to remember, we have to come out of those places. Learn from them, let them go. If we live in the past, we'll never embrace the future for what God has in store for us. And believe me, he has some great things for us. Now that I was looking at verse 19 and how it talked about for us to start looking ahead. Now write this down, start looking ahead, or if you want to say it, say it out loud, start looking ahead. When we start looking ahead, we see God bring newness, and that's put, put that down as number one. We see God bring newness. And then number two, I want to tell you, you can put this down also, anticipate God do something great. Again, I'm going to repeat it. Anticipate God doing something great. While we look forward to the new things, remember not to make an idol out of the new. Just come when God is blessing us with those new things and he is restoring us, renewing us, renewing our minds. He's strengthening us. Just remember when he brings us into the new areas, we got to remember to give him praise. Not come into it with a big head. Not come into it forgetting that he blessed us with what he gave us. We have to remember to give him thanks. We have to be vigilant, not to have itching ears for new fads. We must be careful when God brings newness that we don't wonder. That means that we need to stay focused. Amen? Amen. God is saying be careful when he brings to us to newness we, that we do not err. I was looking at that word. I pulled it up, and I looked it up in the dictionary, and it means go astray, that we do not wander, that we do not forget that he brought us from a place where we were in that may not have been so good. Again, it's okay sometimes to look back, but don't stay there. We got to continue to move ahead. Amen? 
And what God is saying is that I let you out of slavery. I saved you from a certain death. But being delivered from slavery and death is the destination. He said, I have something better and different for you. But it's going to require us to keep moving forward again. Put that down. Keep moving forward. We got to keep our eyes on where God is bringing us, where he brought us from, where he's taking us at. That's where we need to be at at this point. We got to just remember what he's done for us and where he's brought us out. You're looking for a new job? He'll open that door up. You feel like you've been there 10, 20, 30 years, continue to pray. I mean, 10, 20, 30 years, it's a long time. But if we continue to trust God, when we look back over, you like, God did this. He brought me out, and he brought me into this new thing. I was thinking about the song that we sing sometimes in praise and worship. It says, it's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is coming my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. So come come on, let's continue to keep moving forward. Say that with me. Move forward. Let's continue to move forward. Amen. He says, I'm making a path in the wilderness, and I'm, and he's refreshing us with streams of living waters. Amen. What that means is that he'll move some things out of our way, some things that it seemed like where it was too hard for us. He's going to start shifting and moving stuff out of our way. If we ever said and we heard it before, if God don't do it, it's not going to get done. And that's what he does. He moves things out of our way. And that's the God that we serve. He's the God that moves things. He's the God that shifts things. Amen. And also, I was looking down here um, in this part where we also have to remember that we stay obedient. Amen. When he bless us and he bring us through the things that we have where we have come from and the things that we're placing before him, talking about not looking back when he bring us through and he's doing those things in our lives. He is saying to be obedient. Remember those gifts. Remember the anointing that he has placed in our lives. Remember what he has done for us. Be obedient. Show up in the house of God. Show up. Amen. Come in the house with a praise. Remember that God did it. Remember that he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Amen. So just anticipate God doing something great. He will remove the obstacles. God has a fresh start for us. That's exactly what he has. Amen. Um, I also was thinking about this song that we used to sing some years ago. It said, I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you that my past is over in you. Amen. I found... I forgot all of the words to it, but I know it talks about moving forward. All the songs that I sing, sometimes we forget the words, but that song, it just kind of stuck to me on this morning. All I kept hearing him say is he's moving us forward, and we just got to keep that in our mind that God is moving us forward. Amen? Also, I just want to just talk for a minute. Let me just slow down. I felt like I was getting a little bit excited. Amen. I just was looking at something that um, I was thinking about that it's time for us to let go. It's like we're moving in a whole new place. We in transition and we know sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes being in transition is uncomfortable and it doesn't feel good sometimes. It's like which way Am I going? We know we placed those things before God. We made up in our minds that we're not going to move back. We are continuing to move forward because that's what God wants us to do. And it's uncomfortable sometimes. And it seems like we've been beaten and we're being pulled and we're being pushed. And it's like, what's going on, God? And again, he's saying, I got a new thing for you. And that's the God that we serve. He always have great things for us. Come on, look at your person and say great things. Amen. He has great things for us. Amen. And like I said, I know it's uncomfortable. 
I know it feels weird. I hear the young people talk about how things feel weird sometimes. I heard some older people say it too. It feels a little strange sometimes. And I know you don't know what's coming next. I know you feel like you're losing out on a lot. But remember, you're gaining so much more. We're gaining so much more. I also had a, um, a look at the, I know this was going around like the social media sites. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this. There is this cartoon of a little girl and then the image of what's supposed to be Jesus Christ. And the little girl was holding this little teeny, I'm sure everybody's seen this, saw it as put in there it, once you, you recognize this story. So the little girl, was, she's standing there and she's holding this little small bear, right? And the image of what's supposed to be Jesus, he's standing there like, I think he's, he's kneeling over her. And he has this really big, huge bear that's almost as big as she is. And she has this bear, and it looks like it's been worn out, and it's been and it's old. And she's, like, holding it onto it, just holding it like, I don't want to give this up, okay? And he's, like, with this really big thing that he has for her that's nice and it's new, like, he's like, trust me. And sometimes that's how we get. We get like we get stuck in a place where it's like, I want to hold on to the old. But God is saying, I got something new for you. And what I have for you is bigger. It's better. And it's going to do you good justice let go of that old and embrace the new that's what he's saying amen when he's moving us from an old place to a new place do not remember the former things don't even ponder on the things of the past he says I'm about to do a new thing in you and it will spring forth when God is doing a new thing, he knows what he's doing. The question is, do we perceive it? If we are not aware that something new is coming, we would never make room for the new. Although it feels, feels more comfortable to stay in what's familiar, it's a dangerous place. We'll be missing out on so much more of the beauty that God has for us. Forget the old embrace the new say it with me forget the old embrace the new write it down in the comments forget the old and embrace the new and one more time we're going to say it together in my closing forget the old and embrace the new amen god bless you everyone we look forward to seeing you here on sunday at 10 a.m amen What you reach for is within your reach. And I want you to get on your tippy toes because the stuff that used to be out of your reach, God have mercy. Oh God.